There we go. Sweet. Better work. Sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, today, I'm going to talk to you about website localization. Uh, my name is Caitlin Stewart. I am a full stack developer. I work primarily in uh, .NET C Sharp. And I work at NXB Mobile, which is a mobile dispatch software company. Uh, this is kind of the inspiration for my talk. It's a uh, poorly translated game. So why should you localize your website? Uh, currently in the United States, take Spanish for example, 50 million people speak Spanish and growing. Now when you support multiple languages, you're greatly increasing your target audience. Uh, within the United States, you can get Spanish and English. That'll cover a great majority. Uh, with Canada, you can add French and your audience is definitely going to grow. And once you have that framework in for one language, it's very, very easy to add additional languages because most of the work is already done. So if I change the language in my browser, I should get website to Spanish. I should get websites that are in Spanish, right? Well, if you go to ok.gov, that's not in Spanish. You know, they're a smaller site. Maybe they just didn't want to support. Uh, anyone that speaks Spanish. Uh, GitHub does not. Stack Overflow does, which is definitely very useful. It increases the usability across the world, basically. Uh, Google does not. Newegg doesn't. But Best Buy does. And Amazon does not. So when you think about that as an end user, if Spanish is your primary language, if you were to purchase a product, Best Buy is going to be the easiest website for you to use. So you've decided that you want to localize your website. Where do you start? Google? Well, if you do a Google search, there are all kinds of tools and services and things that you can buy, but that's not really necessary. Localization has built-in support in many, many languages. Java, C Sharp, Ruby on Rails, JavaScript. It has built-in features to handle this. Um, but today we're going to talk about .NET. So first off, how do you get your user's language? Uh, that is actually the most straightforward way to do that is from the browser. They may have a different language set in their operating system, but since you're using the browser, it's easiest to just pull that from the browser. So when that browser sends a request to a web server, that can include the language from the browser. And that's typically the most straightforward way to do it. There are some client-side workarounds, but in .NET, the browser is going to be the easiest way. So how do you do this? In .NET, there is what's called the resource file. And what it is, is it's an XML file, and it has uh, three columns, a name and a value. The name is going to be how you reference your translation, and the value is going to be the, the actual string of your translation. That's what's going to be displayed. So, and when you create this file, it's going to have the language in addition to the file name. So if you named your file localized text, it would be localizedtext.es.resx, which is the resource extension for Spanish. And so within that, there, you're going to create a file for each language. And your language, you can have multiple for each culture. So on our first example here, we have localizedtext.en-us. That's going to be English for the United States. Uh, simply adding the dash GB is going to be Great Britain, so you can handle uh, different spellings and things like that. Uh, you also don't have to include the culture. For example, we have .es and .fr for Spanish and French. Uh, those are going to be anyone that uses those languages. It's going to default to that one translation. So what you do is you're going to start and populate all of the text in your website. You're going to get that set up in your resource file. Once you have that done, you'll want to use those values. Uh, in .NET, that is with explicit localization. So your value is actually an expression. And when that page is run, it's evaluated. So there are many different ways to use those values, but what you'll start by doing is any text in your website, any string, you're going to go through and replace that with a reference to the resource file. Um, in the code behind, it's really simple. It's resources.yourfilename.the name you assign that value in the resource file. Uh, there's response right, evaluating expressions. If you have any like hybrid JavaScript, 
you can uh, use C Sharp to hide that in a hidden value and pull that value as well. And so here is what it looks like client side. Uh, you can see we use the ASP localized tag. And in there we have a reference to our resource file, the name of the file, and then the name of the value. And you can have more than one resource file if you wanted to break it up by page or whatnot. Uh, in your checkbox, you can just replace the text, once again, with a reference to the name from your XML file. And then on the server side, it's super easy. Wherever you are referencing any string or anything, it's just resources.yourfilename.the name for that value. And so the most tedious part of this is going through and replacing everything in your website with all the code. And so once you've done that, once you've set it up, say, for English and Spanish, all you have to do then is go through your resource file, get all your names and move those over, and then in the value, replace the translation. So then you'd have localized text.en, .es for Spanish, .fr, and the browser is going to automatically recognize those for you. So once one language is in, it's very, very easy to just add others, which can grow your target audience and make your product more accessible to everyone. Thank you.